Welcome everybody, Doug Scockle here, a retired head men's basketball coach at Colorado Mesa University and we're moving into part four now of the Triangle Zone Offense Series and in the part three of course we had a college women's team doing the demonstrating and uh, today we're going to get into the Triangle Offense uh, with a, a men's team demonstrating and there's going to be a difference between the two. Uh, the, the women's, uh, in my opinion, the women's uh, uh, part three uh, video is you're going to see a much more polished version of the triangle. The women had had uh, an opportunity to run the offense for about three months, so they really uh, ran it well. And the situation with the men is I went to the University of Colorado, Colorado Springs in uh, late January of, of uh, 2006 to uh, serve as the interim basketball coach. They uh, had decided they needed to make a, make a change. They had uh, been 3-47 and 47 in their previous uh, 50 games. And so I was brought in to finish out the season. And when I initially uh, went there, my thought was, you know what, um, I'm not going to make a bunch of changes here. It's tough on those kids. Uh, I'm the one that needs to adjust. So we're going to run the offense that they've been running. We're on the defensive system that they've been running. And, and I'll just see if we can make it better. Uh, and through my expert coaching, we managed to go 0-6 uh, uh, doing that. And uh, so... Uh, I, I called the kids in after that, uh, that sixth game, uh, that we had six, uh, the sixth game in a row that we had lost, and I, I got in the locker room afterwards, I said, fellas, I said, I really apologize, I thought that was the way to go. I said, it'd be real easy for me with six games to go now to just kind of uh, babysit you the rest of the way, but I don't think that's fair to you, and I, you know, if I'm here, then, then we're gonna, I want to give you the best opportunity possible for us to win. And so we're going to make some changes. And so I did make changes, and, and uh, we installed the triangle zone offense. And, of course, we're using this man-to-man -man or zone. We had three days practice to put that thing in. And uh, we went uh, to uh, uh, on the road to New Mexico Highlands University, a team that beat us by about 28 points uh, the first go-around. And uh, we upset them. Uh, on their floor and we came home uh, three days later and went against uh, uh, a Southern Colorado team and we had uh, beaten us by 25 earlier and we upset them. Anyway, we ended up going three and three in the final six games including an upset of the conference champion. And the other two, two of the three losses we led at the five minute mark. Five minutes to go in a game we led. Uh, unfortunately we just couldn't uh, quite finish it off. But that's a rather dramatic change to go from three and uh, would amount to three and fifty-three to three and three, and upsetting the conference champion in those last six games. So, uh, I, I want you know I want you to understand what's going on, and I want to create some background here so that you can see why this isn't going to be as polished because we didn't have near as many uh, practices. But uh, nonetheless, I think you'll be able to uh, get an idea of the concepts uh, behind the triangle offense. We stayed true to that, and we got some pretty good results. Uh, because of it. Now, uh, while I'm thinking about it, uh, once again, this is going to be against a man-to-man -man defense, and I know that there are those of you out there going, but Coach Scott, we want to see it against the zone. So I need to put out this request to our subscribers. If you have uh, been running the triangle zone offense, I know a lot of you have been, if you've been running the triangle zone offense, and you would be willing to share a game video of the triangle offense going against zone defense, I would be forever indebted, and so would the uh, literally thousands of coaches that have requested uh, uh, the chance to uh, you know to see this. So if you would email me, and my email information uh, is already up on the front of the video, but if you would email me and let me know how uh, I could contact you and we can get in touch, and, and if we can turn a, uh, turn that into a YouTube video to help these. Uh, uh, many, many coaches that want to see it against the zone. I, I really appreciate that. Well, let's talk about those changes. And, of course, the most obvious one is that we changed offenses to the triangle zone offense. And uh, the, the thing that they've been doing offensively before was kind of an equal opportunity uh, offense, and that didn't really make any sense to me because I, particularly we had one kid that I thought maybe, maybe had some all-conference uh, uh, potential, a little bit different uh, uh, situation, and he wasn't getting any more shots than, you know, than anybody else. So I talked to the players and I said, look, this offense is not going to be a democracy. It's not going to be an equal opportunity thing. And uh, my coaching style is what I call benevolent dictator. And what that means is I like my guys, but we're going to do it my way. 
And so I looked at our personnel, looked at this kid, and I said, well, we need to feature him. And I, and I told him in front of the players, I said, he needs to average 30 points a game if we are going to have a chance to win, and we can win that way. And he actually did end up averaging 25 points a game once we put him into this system. Uh, but anyway, so the, the way that, uh, and I changed him from being a, uh, he was a wing, and I made him uh, into one of our post players, uh, you know, probably the four position, if you will, power forward. But I called him a, a point post because one of the other problems we had is that some of our guards kind of struggled in bringing the ball up against some really seasoned uh, perimeter defenders. So... This was a kid that had pretty good ball handling skills, and since he was being guarded typically by the other team's foreman, I had him bring the ball up uh, and to get the offense going, and uh, it really uh, made a difference. Our turnovers uh, were cut down significantly, which meant we had more offensive opportunities. So by putting him into one of those post positions in the triangle offense, he was we really increased his the number of touches that he had, and he was always one pass away. And so we had these the, one of two circumstances. If he was guarded by a four-man, then we knew that his best opportunity was going to be receiving the ball at the top of the circle and to drive that uh, taller but probably slower uh, defender and to either drive it all the way to the basket, draw the foul if he could, or pull up maybe uh, 9, 10 feet away from the mid-range jumper, or as he drives, what we found is that uh, they started trying to help off of wings, and now he could throw the ball to a wide open uh, wing for an uncontested three-pointer versus what in the past had been challenged three-pointers, so our percentages went up. So, that was a real important. That was a real important uh, th thing for us to, uh, to uh, do as part of the uh, triangle zone offense. So you're going to see when we get into the into the game footage here, it's going to look a little bit different uh, than the, the the triangle that you saw in part three. Uh, the other thing that we did is that we didn't do X cuts. Uh, X cuts I think take some time to get you know really work on the timing and reads and that kind of stuff, but. Really more so, I, the, the, the kid that I'm talking about that played the four, and then our, we had a five man that was you know, reasonably handy. And so uh, we, when the ball went in low, uh, I wanted them to have space to operate one-on-one uh, -on -one down in there. And so instead of running X cuts, uh, we uh, did a kind of a stay-and-play type thing where the, uh, the, you know, the wing and the corner guard would just stay where they were and, and give that kid a chance to... Uh, uh, operate down low, and, and if he got doubled, then they kicked the ball out for, again, an uncontested three-point shot. Now, the other thing that we felt was really important was to have offensive patience, and you'll see that uh, in, the, uh, uh, in the game footage that you're going to see. Uh, and so I, I did two things. Uh, I, I felt we needed to shrink the bench. We were playing too many players, and I shrunk it down to, uh, we played about six kids, you know, maybe seven, uh, where before it might have been 10 or 11. And... Uh, so by do, by doing that, you can you know you can uh, but you can shrink the bench. But I felt we needed to shrink the game. So by take, taking more time on offense and being patient on offense, it meant that there were going to be fewer possessions in the game, which meant there were fewer uh, possessions that we had to defend on the other end. So we could kind of save our energy for there. And I'd even told our kids, I said, if you get tired because you're playing, you're logging a lot of minutes right now, uh, if you have to rest. You do it on the offensive side. So sometimes you look at this game footage, you're going to go, wow, they're not really cutting hard or moving hard, and probably because they were doing what I told them to do. Uh, so, uh, and the other thing that it did by showing offensive patience is it stopped runs by the opponent. Uh, you know, in the six games that we lost before we changed uh, to the triangle, uh, you know, we just, we fueled runs. We'd shoot it too fast, and the next thing you know, there's a flurry of up and down the court, up and down the court, and there's a, you know, a 10-0 run uh, by our opponent. So offensive patience uh, helped us shrink the game. Well, as I mentioned before, you're going to see some hiccups in here. The execution and timing are just are simply going to be off at times. And sometimes we, uh, maybe we forget to go to the right spot or whatever it is. But the, the key is, the kids uh, were really good about uh, not panicking and, uh, uh, being patient, and what it resulted in is that eventually uh, some defender would make a mistake and uh, we would end up getting the shot or scoring opportunity that we wanted, not the one that uh, the defense wanted us, uh, you know, the scoring opportunity the defense wanted us to take. Now it's important that you don't just see what we do, okay? It's important for you to have a critical eye and see what could or should have been done. For example, I you know, would look at a game film 
uh, and in review, you know, I'd be going, and I'd look at him and say, oh, we missed that cutter. Uh, or, oh, the return pass would have gotten us an easy score. Or, oh, if we'd have just sustained our post up, we could have got an easy bucket. Oh, the lob pass was there. We didn't see him. And all this would have been remedied uh, in time, uh, but we just simply ran out of time because, again, it was, it was done just over the, the last three weeks of the season. Before we get to the uh, game footage, there's one thing I want to talk to you about that I think is really critical. And I thought that in, in part three, the women did a much better job at passing to the low post. That, that's something that has to be practiced and drilled on. Passing to the post is an acquired skill. But it is acquired, just like learning how to play a musical instrument. You start out not so good, and but if you keep, you know, stay with it and persistent, and eventually it gets better and better. So every day, uh, you know, we would drill. I'm talking about uh, uh, with that team, but also the the women is a, is a good example. They drilled every day. Always had a drill where they were working on feeding the post, feeding the post, passing to the post. And uh, they just need to, they, you know, they just need to practice it. They just need to see uh, how to, you know, how to deliver the ball, where to deliver the ball, try to pass the ball away from the defender. We don't pass it to the post, we pass it away from the defender. And uh, so anyway, uh, I also should mention that uh, uh, when I definitely want the ball to go into the low post area, uh, I will call out 45. And uh, 45 simply means this, that the four or five man must touch the ball in the low post before anybody may attempt to score. And so what it does, we, we become even more adept at passing the post because there's only one thing that's supposed to happen when 45 is called. It's into the bench, or excuse me, it's into the post or out on the bench. So 45, that ball's going in a low post. Uh, before anybody uh, gets a chance to try to score. It might be that post player that scores, but again, he might fan it out and create a, a wide open uh, three-point shooting opportunity as well. So that's the background. Now let's uh, see the triangle zone offense in action with men doing the demonstrating. Oh, man. 
Oh, this man! 